As of June 2021, Subway has over 37,000 locations in more than 100 countries, making it one of the most omnipresent restaurant chains in the world. And since its rise, dozens of chains have come along hoping to mimic its success. But did you know the brand story originally started in 1965, when a 17-year-old bootstrapper tried to figure out a way to fund his college education? With the simple words, let's open a submarine shop, a 35-year-old nuclear physicist changed the boy's life forever. Considering that neither of them had ever run a business before, this suggestion came as a big surprise, let alone the fact that the boy had never even made a sub before in his life. In this video, we'll tell you how they overcame the many obstacles that laid in their way, and how they beat all odds and made it happen anyway. Frederick Adrian DeLuca was born on October 3, 1947, in Brooklyn, New York, to Italian-American parents. It was the year 1965, and Fred was about to turn 18. He wanted to pursue a medical career and was looking for a way to pay for college, but he knew he didn't have the money to pay for it. So instead, he decided to see if a friend of his parents could help him out. His name was Peter Buck. Peter is a nuclear physicist, and Fred considered him to be the perfect person to ask for advice, as he seemed to have life figured out. One sunny day, Peter invited Fred and his parents to a barbecue at his house. Fred saw his chance. He mustered all his courage and walked over to Peter, but while he pretended he wanted to ask him for some advice, in reality, he was hoping the man would give him a loan. He could have never expected what was about to happen next, though. Speaking of that day, Fred once said in an interview, I remember it was a hot and sunny afternoon and we were at our close family friend, Dr. Peter Buck's house for a barbecue. I was worried about how I was going to pay for my college tuition fees with the $1.25 per hour job I was doing at the local hardware store. So I decided to ask Pete for advice. But instead of merely giving Fred advice or a loan, Peter went a little further. He told him to open a submarine sandwich shop. Earlier that month, Peter had seen a sandwich shop in his hometown experiencing huge success. He suggested that it would earn Fred enough money to see him through college, and he even offered to be his partner. Fred couldn't believe his ears, and keeping in mind that neither Peter nor Fred had ever run a business before, it was a response he had not seen coming. But with nothing to lose, he didn't need much convincing. The two men quickly joined forces. Fred would do the groundwork of running the restaurant while Peter would take care of the funds. He provided the $1,000 startup money and their first shop opened on the 28th of August, 1965 in Bridgeport in Connecticut. They named it Peter's Super Submarines. It was a very simple, basic store. They did not have a lot of equipment and what they did have was all purchased secondhand. The menu was simple too. They just had five sandwiches and the only other thing you could buy was a can of Coke. The entrepreneurial pair was feeling optimistic though, and their next step was to formulate a business plan that outlined the company's goals. As another local sandwich chain had 32 stores at the time, they set themselves a target of reaching that number within 10 years. Would they make it? The start was rough to say the least. When Fred and Peter launched a radio advertisement for their place, they quickly noticed something was off. Pete's submarine sounded an awful like Pizza Marines. It was misleading and it needed to be changed. They switched the name to Pete's Subway. And finally, in 1968, it was shortened to just Subway. But the duo would need more than a simple name change to get their business up and running. Their first location was in a not so popular area. And because of this, the store wasn't doing well. It was something Fred regretted immensely, but he also saw it as a great learning experience. And from then on, they made sure that all the next branches opened in areas that had higher visibility. We learned a lot on our feet and quickly realized that marketing and visibility were going to be key factors in the success of our business. So the third outlet was in a highly visible location and it's still serving sandwiches today, Fred once said. But how about their big plan to reach 32 stores in just 10 years? Well, it seemed like that wasn't going to work out. 
Nine years after they started, they had a mere 16 units. Not too bad, but it was far from the 32 they originally envisioned. Something had to be done to make their original dreams come true. Fred realized that the most efficient way to meet their goal was to get other people involved, and the best way to do that was through franchising. This way, independent owners could operate under the Subway name for a franchise fee and annual royalties. It was the mid-70s, though, and franchising was not as common as it is today. Without any coaches or advisors, Fred and Peter had to wing it. The learning curve was steep, and it took them a long time to learn the franchise business. But from the very beginning, Fred felt this was the right thing to do. He saw it as the perfect way to help them get to their goal of 32 stores, and it was a decision he wouldn't regret, because as soon as the company started franchising, their fortunes changed wildly. Despite their initial struggles, Fred finally managed to pay his way through university, and Subway began expanding at a breakneck pace from then on. In 1981, there were already 166 stores, but Fred had big dreams and he knew he wanted to expand even further. Subway's chief development officer, Don Furtman, recalls his first field meeting at the company in 1981 when Subway had just 166 stores. Fred announced the goal of having 5,000 stores by 1994, he said. We thought he was nuts. We hadn't hit 200 yet, but we were thinking logically while he was thinking passionately. And it was that passion that led to Subway's ever-growing expansion. By 1978, they had opened 100 stores across the USA. They hit their 5,000-unit goal ahead of schedule in 1990. And the numbers only kept increasing. By 1995, they already had 10,000 stores. The future was looking bright, and it goes to show that focusing and setting goals can have enormous impact. It provides direction, focus, and motivation and it helps you sustain momentum in life. Another great thing that set Subway apart from other food stores was its focus on customer engagement. It was one of the early adopters of the open kitchen layout that lets you watch your food being made right in front of you. People loved it, and it not only reassured them about what's in their food, but it also allowed for endless customization on the fly. But would this be enough? Over the next decade, Subway had some great stunts going on that propelled its success to unknown heights. First was their Jared Fogle. Born in 1977, Jared first came to media attention in 1999 via an article that was published in the Indiana Daily Student. The article detailed how Jared lost 245 pounds, 111 kilograms, by exercising and eating a diet of Subway sandwiches. Not much later, he was featured in a Men's Health magazine article titled Stupid Diets That Work. As Jared attributed his significant weight loss to Subway, the company realized he was a marketing gimmick in the making. Jared was hired to help advertise the following year, and he became a massive success. In the two years following his commercial debut, sandwich sales rose roughly 30%, and his popularity led him to being featured in over 300 commercials. Unfortunately, his tenure would eventually end with a blow, but more on that in a bit. Telling a great story is the best way to not only capture your customer's attention, but also keep them hooked. We all love a nice feel-good story, and that's exactly what Jared was offering. While the Jared thing could have been a mere one-season marketing arc, Subway kept going with it for over 15 years. Sure, they could have gone for a boring motto along the lines of, our food is lower in fat and healthier than our competitors. But they knew very well that it would never be nearly as compelling as, hey, look at me, I ate exclusively at Subway and lost tons of weight. At the time, Subway was also truly on top of trends. They had always had lower fat offerings, but instead of marketing themselves as just a sub shop, they now began focusing more on fresh ingredients. It was the era of eat fresh, after all. And in a world where fast food mostly meant fried everything, the emphasis on fresh ingredients was a great way to take advantage of the growing interest in eating healthier. Things were looking great, and in 2000, Fred even published his own book. Seven years later, he had already amassed a net worth of $1.5 billion, and Forbes magazine named him number 242 of the 400 richest Americans. Then in 2008, another smash hit was in the making. 
Subway introduced its tantalizing deal. For just $5, customers could now purchase any foot-long sandwich. The promotion was a huge hit with cash-strapped customers during the global recession, and its famous jingle became the company's calling card. Within a year, revenue skyrocketed, and many industry analysts dubbed it one of the most successful promotions in the history of American cuisine. But while things may have once seemed so perfect, troubles were looming on the horizon. It began with Jared Fogel. In 2015, the former Subway spokesman's tenure came to an abrupt end. An FBI investigation convicted him traveling to pay for sex with minors and possessing child pornography, and he was sentenced to 15 years in prison. That same year, founder Fred DeLuca also passed away. He had been suffering from leukemia since 2013, and after a two-year-long struggle, he passed away at the age of 67. As he hadn't set up a succession plan, however, the company's direction was unclear. And the chain's biggest promotion, the $5 footlong, well, it turned out the deal wasn't so hot for Subway's franchisees. In fact, they hated it. They claimed the corporate-mandated deal decimated their profits, and they have banded together and revolt numerous times to fight its economic infeasibility. But franchisee unrest wasn't all Subway was dealing with. It also had some fierce competition, a lethal combination of McDonald's increased sales and an increase in the grab-and-go sandwiches at convenience stores and gas stations did a number on its revenue. And as if that weren't enough, its famous Eat Fresh tagline was now becoming increasingly less relevant. While it used to set Subway apart from competitors, by now, other mainstream fast food spots also jumped on the healthy bandwagon and began offering fresh salads and lower calorie alternatives. Customer demand began dwindling bit by bit. And since 2012, Subway franchisees saw their average annual sales dip $65,000 per store, from $482,000 to $417,000 a significant decline in what is already a slim margin business. And in 2020, the ailing company closed an estimated 10% of its units, drawing questions about the long-term future of its operations. Would the vision of a subway on every corner have to be buried? The subway empire has been crumbling over the years, and it seems like over time it hasn't managed to continue doing what it initially was so good at, keeping up with trends and noticing what customers want. The company Fred and Peter created was among the first to present the idea that fast food can be fresh and healthy. But now that the strategy upon which Subway built its success has become the industry standard, more will have to be done to keep its footing. Little by little, Subway is losing ground to more innovative brands that offer better ingredients, more customization, and a more modern feel. And if you look at other big fast food giants like McDonald's and Taco Bell, they are creating something entirely unique and are looking more and more like modernized lounges where customers actually enjoy hanging out. For Subway to keep up, a thorough revamp may be needed. And we're not just talking about merely changing up the menu. Perhaps Subway YouTube sensation Milad Mirz can help them out. This was the story of Subway and how it was invented by a broke high school graduate who just wanted to find a way to pay for college. While it's currently still a billion dollar franchise that can be found in over 100 countries, the company has steadily been losing ground to competitors and it is dealing with franchisees who are also increasingly getting more agitated. Do you think Subway will manage to revamp itself and regain the foothold it once had? Why? Share your opinion in the comments. I'd love to hear what you think. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something from it. If you did, then make sure to check out our channel for more inspiring business stories. And make sure to let us know if you have a business in mind that you would like us to cover next.